Hi. I just wanted to pop in and share a little bit about what is happening in Awakening Together with the seven steps to awakening and out of the stillness. As you know, if you've been watching my out of the stillness videos for the last two years, um, at the end of step two, I retired from that teaching. And the reason I retired from that teaching was to turn it over to the group. I ended my final teaching by saying, it is time for me to become less so that you can become more. Uh, I mentioned this is what John the Baptist said or is recorded to have said in the Bible when Jesus showed up and was baptized. John the Baptist said it is time for me to become less so that he may become more, the Christ. Uh, so you are the Christ that I am turning this over to. What is going to happen now in Awakening Together is that those who want to participate in this ongoing teaching are going to contemplate the quotes from the seven steps to awakening and also look at my contemplations from out of the stillness together and share their contemplations of those writings. If I've done anything in the last couple of years as I was sharing from the seven steps and out of the stillness, what I've done is demonstrate how to contemplate. I've heard people say about the quotes in uh, the seven steps to awakening that they're all the same, you know? <laughs> uh, and so people felt like they were having uh, challenges contemplating the quotes and, and getting rich, richer and deeper wisdom out of them because they just saw the quotes as all the same. And in, in some ways, it's true that the quotes are all the same. They're all pointing to the same truth. But what I demonstrated through Out of the Stillness is how you can contemplate the quotes a little bit differently each time. And so now that I've set the example, it's time for you to contemplate. And when the group begins contemplating together, you're going to begin with step three. Step three is a really important step because that step, the objective of that step is to expose the ego. What you will see in Out of the Stillness is how I contemplated the quotes as I was exposing the ego here. But it doesn't really do you a lot of good to watch Regina expose the ego. It's more important for you to expose the ego. So when you contemplate those step three quotes, that's really the point of view you want to have. How, how, can I, how can this quote help me to expose the ego? And again, you'll still have out of the stillness, you'll still have my contemplations as a demonstration of how I did that. But your contemplations aren't necessarily going to look like mine. In fact, the first week has already occurred, and I'm going to point you to that audio in a moment. But when people were contemplating the first quote from step three, they did not contemplate it like I did. In fact, let me just pull this out and we'll look at that quote briefly, briefly together. So this is the first quote from Sri Ramana Maharshi, quote number 525. So long as one retains a trace of individuality, one is a seeker still, and not a true seer effort free, even though one's penance and one's powers may be wonderful indeed. So what the group seemed to mostly focus on was uh, the word seeker and not a true seer, effort free. You know, some people, for example, talked about their, their judgments that they might have uh, against seeing themselves as still a seeker or not seeing themselves as yet a seer. And that's perfect. 
You know, whatever jumps out at you in the quote to contemplate now is what you are to contemplate now. That's just not what jumped out at me when I contemplated, because when I first contemplated this quote, you know, a few, a few years back, whenever that was, I had no challenge seeing myself as a seeker still. So that part of the quote didn't jump out at me. What jumped out as me is so long as one retains a trace of individuality. And when I contemplated that quote, I kind of asked, well, how am I retaining my sense of individuality? And I saw that whenever I basically was comparing myself to others or judging others and seeing differences between them and me, I was maintaining me. And that became the focus of my contemplation, which is number 525 and out of the stillness. Something else might jump out at you. So when we contemplate these quotes, it's really important to know we aren't trying to get to a right answer. We aren't trying to say in our own words what this quote meant which is kind of defining the quote. We aren't judging the quote. Like some people might judge that the words, even though one's penance may be wonderful indeed. Some people may judge that, that you know, we're talking about penance being wonderful. The purpose of, of contemplating a step three quote, in fact, here's the objective of step three, See how the imposter self perpetuates its imaginary self and all illusion and suffering. So when I contemplate this quote, what I'm doing is how can this quote help me see how the ego perpetuates itself, all illusion and all suffering in my case. So long as one retains a trace of individuality, one is a seeker still and not a true seer effort free, even though one's penance and one's powers may be wonderful indeed. What is in that quote for me that helps expose the ego here, the ego's defense mechanisms here, how the ego plays here? Now, of course, that's only for step three. Uh, each step in the seven steps to awakening has its own objective. But let me show you something. If we go to the Awakening Together website, and based on how the website is organized right now, here's Regina's audios. And we go to the most recent teachings to the seven steps to awakening. And if we scroll down, to the very first one in this last series where I was looking at out of the stillness and seven steps together, this is it. The very first one was called, what do I value from step one? And if we click on that teaching, notice I did that July 20th, 2022. As I'm making this recording, it's June 14th, 2024. That means it took me one year probably to do the step one quotes and one year probably to do the step two quotes. It definitely took two years for me to share those quotes. And I would expect it's going to take the group a year to two years to do the step three quotes. I've already sent uh, the sanctuary directors the step three quotes I have highlighted and out of the stillness that I was planning to cover if I had continued the teaching. And the group plans to look at those highlighted quotes, and there are quite a few of them. So this is not uh, something that we're rushing through. This is something that we're looking at carefully, starting with step three. And then if the group continues, step four, step five, step six, and step seven. Sounds like it might take years, huh? It took me eight and a half years. The very first time I contemplated the seven steps to awakening and wrote my journal, which now is published as Out of the Stillness, that took me eight and a half years. So this may take time. It's not about rushing. 
It is about awakening, the seven steps to awakening. That's what this is about. And again, it seems best rather than me sharing and everybody listening to, oh, look how she contemplated. It seems best for you to do your own contemplation. You discover your own obstacles. You discover your own wisdom. You will awaken through participating. Now, as I mentioned, the group has already done the first session. And in the first 15 minutes of that recording, they talk about the process they decided on, on how they're going to do this together. So whenever you think you might be joining this group, I recommend you go and listen to that first 15 minutes of that first recording. And I'll put the link below the video so that you'll know their process and you can join in the group, join with them in the way that they are doing this together. Let me just show you where that is on the Awakening Together website now. Uh, currently, the way it is organized, and the reason I keep saying that is there's some talk of reorganizing the website. <laughs> but currently, the way it is organized, if you go under Audios and Podcasts, Sanctuary Teachers, notice it says Group Led Contemplation Sangha. That's what they're calling this right now. And you'll notice it starts off talking about Regina Don Akers has shared a retreat called The Sangha is the New Guru. The retreat is described in this way. It has been said that more than 50% of the members of an effective Sangha are likely to awaken. The Sanskrit word Sangha literally means community. Specifically, it refers to a community that is dedicated to spiritual awakening. The primary qualities of Sangha are the members genuinely live the spiritual teachings they study. They speak and teach from their own authentic experience. They support one another on the spiritual path. Awakening together was designed by inner guidance to be a Sangha rather than a guru-centered collective. As we step into the vision of the Sangha is the new guru, we are learning how the Sangha is its own teacher and honing the skills that are important for each member of a highly effective Sangha. We are teaching ourselves how to genuinely support awakening for you and for the community. During this program, we will continue to contemplate out of the stillness and the seven steps to awakening as Regina had been contemplating in this time slot. And then it continues from there, and you can come and read the rest of this. This talks a little bit about the process, part of which is that each week, a different member of the group will facilitate the group. There's not even going to be a, a leader. This is a leaderless group. And again, if you look at this very first teaching where they did step three, number 525, especially the first 15 minutes, you'll hear about their process. Notice this program is currently scheduled on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. And I would guess that if there's a lot of interest in participating in this program, but you are unable to participate at this particular time, if there's enough requests, they may add another, you know, maybe an evening program. Um, I also want to show you, uh, if you go to Amazon, again, the seven steps to awakening, you can order it from Amazon. There's also a newer edition of this book and it has a slightly different cover. The insides are minor. I think there were a couple of typos that Michael Langford corrected and that's about it. So it doesn't really matter whether you get the older version with the red flower or the newer version with the orange flower. Again, this is the red flowers. Also, when you go to Amazon, you'll be able to find Out of the Stillness. And to fully participate, you will need a copy of both of those books. Uh, as for me, <laughs> 
I am still around. I'm just not as visible as I used to be. I'm listening. I'm paying attention to you all. I am rooting for you all. I am celebrating your clarity. I mean, I'm right here. I'm right here all the time. And of course, I still have some side projects that I'm doing. Um, right now, for example, I am teaching from the Regina Dawn Akers translation of the Tao Te Ching. Let's see, I think I have that. And yeah, that's right here, right? I translated this last year and now I'm teaching from it and I'm posting those teachings in YouTube. So if you haven't been joining in on that, that's something you might enjoy. If I share my screen one more time, and this time we go to YouTube. If you just type in um, Dow, oh, it's right here, Dow to Ching, Regina Don Akers. You'll come and you can view the full playlist and you can listen to whichever recording you are ready for now. Um, I have recorded up to chapter 23 and I plan on continuing this. This again may take me a couple of years. Nobody's rushing. And what I do in this particular series is I show you uh, why I translated each chapter the way I did, how some others may have translated it. We talk about the teaching in the chapter, the meaning of the chapter, and I give an assignment to help us practice that chapter because this, this is titled Tao Te Ching, an interpretive translation to live by. We want to live by it. So there's like an assignment at the end of each recording. And there may be other projects in the future. Who knows? So uh, I am still around, but I, I don't want to become an obstacle. Uh, some of you may know me. You may know that one of the very first things that happened prior to me becoming a teacher or prior to me uh, scribing with inner wisdom was that I had a vision. I had a vision that we were all in this deep, dark cavern that was completely dark. You couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. You couldn't see anything. But intuitively, I knew there were like, you know, several ways to get out of the cavern. People just couldn't find those ways because of the darkness. And in this vision, I had a, an armful of lit candles. And what happened is people would come up to me one at a time and I would hand them a candle. They would take the candle and they would find their own passageway and follow it out. I wasn't there leading the group out. I was passing out the candles. And I've, you know, I've, through the guidance that I have followed, I have passed out a lot of candles. You know, we have the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament or NTI. Also on the Awakening Together website, if you haven't done this, there's this program that I created. It's a self-study program. It's called 500 Days with NTI. And, you know, one group who decided to go through this 500 days together, you know, when they first started, I think there was this feeling of, oh, wow, 500 whole days. This is going to take forever. Like some of you may be feeling about the seven steps uh, sangha. But they're just about done. In fact, they just finished day 488. And they're talking about how fast it went and how they could have used a thousand days with NTI. So you might want to try the self-study program, 500 Days with NTI. And, and this page will talk about how to do it. Uh, I've also created the Gentle Healing Program. And if you pay attention to Awakening Together, that's a three and a half year program. But if you pay attention to Awakening Together, you'll see when new classes start. I created the Minister Preparation Program, MPP for Awakening Together. And even if you don't want to be a minister, that program allows you to repeatedly go within and contemplate multiple teachings 
And it both strengthens your own ability to hear inner wisdom, and it helps you to see the same truth in multiple symbols. That's a two-year program. Uh, I don't have it with me right here, but you know, another thing that was scribed through me was the teachings of inner Ramana. If you want something small and simple, but something to practice that will help you awaken, go to the teachings of inner Ramana. Or there's the thoughts of awakening, 365 contemplations. That will take you a year. You could go through those. And I'm sure there are other candles I'm forgetting right now. I've been blessed that all of this has been created through me and then awakening together itself, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. How, you know, I've been blessed that I was guided to do all of this. But now, just as I was guided to do all of this, I am guided to back away and let you all take these candles and find your own passageways out of the cavern, your own ways to awakening. So I'm still here, but I'm much less. And I'm so excited to watch you become more and more and more of the Christ, of the awakened one. More full in your wisdom and your clarity and your joy. And I'll be listening. Bye.